Okay, this is our first time out in the Las Vegas two-gun action challenge match. It's a pretty cool new match. This is the third month they've had it. And this first stage here, pretty fun stage. Start out very back of the bay. Now, uh, if you've seen some of these other matches, you quickly recognize what this is. And this is the Remote Vitality Challenge done over again. Not quite the same. It's actually a shorter amount of time provided. And you do have the option of running it with either a pistol or a rifle. If you run it pistol, you can be a lot closer. But even being a lot closer, I am just that much better with rifle or that less good with pistol. So I chose rifle. I think I did pretty decent here. But I can't really compare the scores to my original remote brutality score since slightly different, but same basic concept. Alright, here's Tactical Law. They're running it with this their rifle. Since uh, potato brutality, they switched back to using the red dot. And they're going to get their shot offhand, kneeling, and prone. Move, repeat. See how many times you can do it in one minute. Remember, right foot forward. And once again, this is their second time shooting a left hand in the match. With the previous one being the day before. Now this will be the most complicated stage of the match, with the most variety of things happening. You start out at the back of the bay with your rifle slung, you have to run up, a bunch of pistol targets, finish pistol targets, run back to the back of the bay, get your rifle out, load your rifle, get a bunch of rifle targets. Alright, single rifle, load your weapon. Pistol starts loaded. Yeah, pistol starts rolling. Look at you. That's a, that's a price of doing armor. <laughs> cool. In fact, on. You want this on or no? Cool. You ready? More for when I go prone with the rifle. I don't turn that into a dirt tube. Yeah. It happens. Ready? Ready? Get by! Uh, timer failure right there. Let's try that again. I'm not quite sure how someone would connect the dots. And that's kind of where, like, uh, uh, uh. From each of these pistol locations, you get a hit on the static steel, one on the dueling tree, static steel, dueling tree again, back to static steel, until you've gotten four hits on the dueling tree. You move to the next position, repeat. Three. 
Once you've gone through this sequence enough to get four hits on that dueling tree, go over here, drop the mag, and there's a relatively small dropping high value target. And I get it. It goes down. And you run back over here. And you have multiple rifle shooting positions. So you start out with one hit on each of the static steals standing, and then knock down one of the droppers. Then you move over to the barrel, off the side of the barrel, kneeling, one hit on each of the static steals, and then a dropper. After that, you have to shoot off the top of the barrel, one hit on each of the static steals, drop another dropper. And once that's done, move again, Prone, repeat the same sequence, and that's the end of the round. Prone. Two more heads. One, three, six, six, five. One, three, six. Ready? Goodbye. Okay. So they start with their rifle all the way on their back, keep it completely out of the way for pistol shooting. But they're still having some intermittent issues with the pistol. Um, you think it should be fine? Uh, part of it might be, at least in this instance, they're having some issues with how they're holding it. Spreading those arms out. You know, of note, they are actually more accurate. Even one-handed, left-handed with the pistol, but they're not used to holding it with both hands. Swinger, lock those elbows. Put your hand, don't put your thumb on top. And yeah, they keep getting their thumb Swinger. up against the slide and inducing some malfunctions here. Step rack. Which eats up a lot of time. They actually go over par. The RO there lets them run a few seconds past par just so they can at least finish the round. Even though it doesn't make for a good score, but it at least gets them some experience doing the shooting. Daniel, your thumbs up. Good job. Swinger. Two. There you go. Take your time. And also, part of the learning to be left-handed on doing all these things, learning the manual of arms, doing everything left-handed, and they don't have a lot of practice with that yet, so they need to get... Yeah, keep your thumb down, thumb down, straighten your elbows. Yeah, get all that stuff, all that muscle memory back in place when they learned it all right-handed last year, learning it again this year. But aside from all that, they are actually more accurate left-handed because they're not shooting cross-eyed. Straighten your elbows out. One more. Good job. There you go. Right drop the mag. Right, drop and then mag. a high-value hit on that dropper. Single shot. You got this. Watch where your right hand is. Thumb off. Thumb off. There you go. Took their time. There you go. Good job. Dropped it. Holster. 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 Still have the cheap nylon holster, which just, oh, how long it takes. Velcro. All right, cool. Let's go. But we don't want to buy more than one nice modern holster, so I want to decide which handedness they're sticking with. And as of course, the relatively smart move of getting the rifle off their back while they're still running. And that manual of arms is still a little bit of a struggle. Right foot forward. 
right after foot the switch forward. being okay. left handed. All right, left hips in. Yeah. Far left hips. But the hits are no problem. There you go. All right. They took Top. less Top. time getting the hits than I did, or at least less yeah. less rounds used to get those hits. Don't bother to strike it. Okay, no. Hit. Hit. Here we go. No, you don't have to do prone, but you can if you want. Yeah, it's just the instructions were shoot from the side of the barrel. Kneeling would be faster. You don't spend as much time getting up and down, but I guess not right, prohibited from going prone. And now you're required to go prone here. Seven, so you're 20 over par. But it's still good. Good, good drone. Final stage of the day is a Casarda drill with a pistol. You just go back and forth with the kettlebell, get hit with the pistol, go back across with the kettlebell again, run until you par out. This one has no finish line point. You just keep going for as many iterations as you can manage before the time runs out. And I start out kind of good at my throws. Not really up to my normal level, but it has been a long, long week. I'm tired. That's my excuse. But still, I mean, I at least get it done in two throws each time. Well, that throw, I mean, that was a sad throw. There you go, you got your roll. Now, of note, got to be careful of that second throw, because if it bounces out of the circle, you have to go and put it back in the circle. I got pretty lucky, and none of mine bounced out of the circle. Boom, right in. All right, you got your roll. Yeah, I also had some sort of pistol malfunction there. But I wasn't going to make it through a whole nother iteration anyways. Hi! Hi! We got Bo Sterling! Seven! And this tactical sloth's turn. Still having some occasional issues with how they're holding the pistol when they're shooting it with both hands and left handed. Come here, keep your thumbs low. That didn't help them. And they're also pretty tired. Doing a whole bunch of hiking. Yeah, always good to preload all those excuses. Also, right. I think there is a bit of an element in fatigue degrading accuracy with the pistol. It's not that hard a shot. Yeah, and there's that malfunction. Let's 
Straight elbows, straight elbows. One. I'm gonna get to the throws. I think this is not quite, this is not their regular standard. Usually they can throw a bit farther than this. Been a long week. In. Straight elbows, thumbs down. Two. Yeah, when they get everything together right, that's not that hard a hit. Another malfunction to clear. Gotta work on that. Throw. 